Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, this is now question number seven from my uh, from the Solomon B collection for P3, which is about trig functions. Um, it's also corresponding to question number eight from my end of topic worksheet for P3, uh, which is called trig functions. And um, this question, I'm answering only part A and B of this question seven from Solomon B because questions C and D relate to a topic we haven't covered yet. We'll go through that topic once we get to it. I'll go through those parts once we get to it. Now, question number seven, part A, tells us to solve this equation, pi minus three arc cosine theta equals zero. Now, the word arc cosine theta, arc cosine theta, is just another way of saying the inverse of cosine theta. It's just another way of saying inverse of cosine of theta. They mean exactly the same thing. You'll see the word arc cosine theta, especially in some of the older books. A lot of the mathematicians prefer to use arc cosine rather than inverse cosine. Same with sine and tan. Inverse cosine, um, inverse sine instead of arc um, sine is something that's sometimes used. So they basically mean exactly the same thing. So here we've got to solve this equation. Now, what's the unknown in this equation? It's theta. So our answer should say theta equals. When you solve an equation, you're looking for the value of the variable, what, what, what causes the equation to be true. You want to find the value of theta that makes this whole, this side become zero. Okay, that satisfies the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it to make arc cosine theta the subject. So I'll say arc cosine, arc cosine theta is equal to if you rearrange it, you're going to get pi over 3. Now, how can I rewrite that? Okay, if you're com more confident or more comfortable with writing inverse cosine, you can do that. Inverse cosine theta equals pi over 3. If you're, um, you know, if you rewrite that in its normal form, or in its, in its uh, you know, other form, you can rewrite this as saying that means theta equals cosine of pi over 3. Okay, another way of thinking about it is that to get rid of the inverse cosine, we've got to take the cosine of both sides. If you take the cosine of this side, the cosine and the inverse cosine cancel out. So you're left with theta equals cosine pi over 3. That's another way of thinking about it. Um, that's actually what you're really doing mathematically. You're taking the cosine of this side, and you're taking the cosine of this side, which is a pi over 3, and you end up with the cosine and the inverse cosine cancelling each other out, leaving you with theta and you're left with cosine pi over 3. That's actually mathematically what you're doing when you go from this step to this step. So we know that theta is equal to the cosine of pi over 3, which is um, 60 degrees in radians, and the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to a half. Okay, you can put that in your calculator and confirm if you want. The cosine of pi over 3, in radian mode, you'll end up with getting a half. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Very simple, short question. Now part B. It says, sketch on the same diagram the curves y equals arc cosine x minus 1 for values of x between 0 and 2, and y equals the square root of x plus 2 under the square root sign, both of them, and x is greater than or equal to minus 2 is the domain there. So we have to sketch on the same diagram these two curves. Now, both of these curves will not go below the y-axis. They will stay on the positive side of the... So they won't go below the x-axis. Pardon me. They will stay on the positive side of the y-axis, both of them. Okay, and I'll explain to you why. Is that straight or is it wonky? I can't tell. Okay, I'll explain to you why. Now, the reason why um, for the square root of x plus 2, we're only considering, of course, the positive square root, not the negative square root. So the square root of x plus 2 will never go below... This will never go below the... Um, the x-axis. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. And the arc cosine curve, if we just think about y equals arc cosine of x first. Now, let's think of y equals cosine x. y equals cosine x is a curve that looks like this. Okay, it continues on like that. Now, it is a um, many to one function. Many x values go to the same y value. All right. So the inverse will not be a function if we left it as it is. So in order to make it a function, they restrict the domain such that it is a one to one function. So they get rid of everything on this side, and they get rid of um, 
everything on this side. So they stay restricted to these values here between 0 and pi. Okay, this is pi over 2. So they restrict it between these values. Now it's a one-to-one -one function. And the inverse of the cosine curve, the inverse of the cosine curve, which is our cosine, all these points are swapped over. So this is the point 0, 1. Okay, so you have the point 0, 1. And you also have the point pi over 2, pi over 2 and 0. And you also have the point pi and negative 1. Now, in the inverse, these are swapped over. The inverse function, the x and y, are swapped over. So this is going to become 1, 0. This is going to become 0, pi over 2. And this is going to become minus 1 and pi. So in the inverse function, all of those will be swapped over. So first I'm going to draw in here y equals r cosine x, and then I'm going to use the transformation to change it. So the r cosine x curve will go through 1, 0. And it will go through 0 pi over 2. Let's say this is pi over here. So pi over 2 is about halfway. OK, 0 pi over 2. Somewhere over there. It's just a sketch. It have to be 100% accurate. And then you go, go through minus 1 and pi, which is up here somewhere. So it's going to go through these three points, but not like as a straight line. It's going to curve. Like this curve here, it's going to curve like you know, this would be the top of the curve, so this is going to be curving like in this direction. So I'll try and do as best as I can. It's going to look something like this. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad, I'd say for myself. All right, and now that is y equals arc cosine x. Okay, but we want to draw arc cosine x minus 1. I want to draw it between 0 and 2. X, R cosine x minus 1. So this is actually a transformation like this, where you've replaced the x with x minus 1. So it's a translation, it's a translation of uh, 1, 0. One unit to the right, opposite. So this is going to, this is going to end up going to 2, and this is going to end up going to pi. So it's going to look something like this. I'll just draw it first. I'll just shift it first and then put the values to that because it's just a sketch, it's not accurate, so just make sure that everything fits in the right place. So I know that this is going to be ending up hitting the x, the y-axis at pi, and therefore this is going to be 2 here. Okay, so the whole thing shifted along by 2 units to the right. Okay, so this is now y equals, this is now y equals arc cosine of x minus 1. Okay, so I'll get rid of some of these things here, so it's so cluttered. So that's how I dealt with this. I first drew y equals r cosine x by thinking about the original cosine curve. And then all the x and y values, they swap over. Remember, we have to, we have to restrict it between 0 and pi. And then you, know, you, can draw, you can then swap the x and y values, and you get this. Now, most of, most of you, I mean, all of you should really know what the r cosine curve looks like in the beginning. Okay, I just illustrated how to do it in case you know, we forgot, we didn't know just how to do it from the beginning, so you understand why it's like that. Okay, so most of you in the exam situation, you could just draw it straight away. You should know it goes through uh, 1, 0, pi over 2, 0, pi over 2, and minus 1, pi, and then, yeah, minus 1, pi, and then you can just draw it. Okay, and then you think about it being shifted across one space, so all those shift across one space to the right, because it's inside the function. Then we have y equals the square root of x plus 2. Now, y equals the square root of x plus 2. Well, first of all, y equals the square root of x. Now, that's the inverse of y equals x squared. Okay, and we, again, we restrict y equals x squared. If, if we, if y equals x squared is like this, it is a... Um, many to one function again and if we were to leave it as that if you did the inverse it would be the inverse won't be a function so what you do is you restrict it to just x is greater than zero okay and then you find the inverse and the inverse will look like this it's like reflecting y equals x so the inverse function for y equals and the square root of x i'm just ignoring the plus two for now 
will look something like this. It's like a parabola on its side, but only the this this half of it. Okay, only this half of it that's been drawn and then reflected in y equals x. So that's y equals root x. Now this, what's happened to this function is it's like you have added to inside the function. Okay, so it's going to move minus 2, 0. It's going to be a translation of two units to the left. So this that was at minus, um, that was at 0 is now going to end up going to minus 2. So this is going to end up looking something like that. It's going to shift two spaces to the left, and it's going to go something like this. And this would continue, of course. Let me just draw it a bit, neat, bit neatly here. So it's going to have a shape like this, something like that. Okay. So that's y equals the square root of x plus 2. Okay. So there we have the two graphs drawn on the same axis. Okay. Um, we should really put the intercept here. Now, when x equals 0, y equals root 2. So this point is the square root of 2. So we put the, the y-intercept there, and there we have our graphs. And we can just confirm that we put it in the right place by making sure that root 2 is less than pi over 2. I think this is 1.4, and this is 3.142, 3.142. Divided by 2, of course, it's bigger than 1.4. Yeah, it's 1.5 something. So for sure, it's, it is in the right place. It's below pi over 2, which is good. And there we have our answer to question, um, what was it, 7 part B from the um, Solomon B paper and question 8 part B from end of topic worksheet. As I said, part C and D, I will do in a later time because that's related to a topic we're going to cover at the end of P3. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like to see other questions from this topic of trig functions, um, you can click on this icon over here. Other questions from the Solomon B collection of P3, click on this playlist over here. Um, you will have the subscribe button in the, in the middle of my um, page here, and you can find your way to other papers or other P3 papers from the card at the top of the page. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.